kiln operation and safety. I'm ready to begin loading my kiln. It's cool and has not been in operation. I'm going to start by putting these greenware pieces inside greenware, meaning they haven't been fired yet. These are bone dry ceramic boxes, so they are dry to the touch with as much of the moisture content having evaporated out of the clay as is possible. I'm going to carefully load them in. They're very delicate at this stage and I'm going to fit as many as I can inside the kiln. It's okay when doing a greenware firing that the pieces touch each other. If this was glazed, I wouldn't want any glazed pieces to touch or they would fuse. So as I'm loading up the kiln, I'm putting these this kiln furniture, these columns, uh, in the spaces between the boxes so that I can put shelves in between and build up layers inside the kiln. My shelves have been prepared with a layer of kiln wash so that if I was firing any glazed pieces and it dripped onto the shelves, I'd be able to remove that glaze without it fusing to my shelves. When I load pieces that have been glazed and they're ready for a glaze firing, I need to always check the foot of the piece, that's the bottom part that it rests on, to make sure that hasn't been glazed. If the foot has been glazed, I have to put it on stilts, which are something to raise it up off the shelf so it doesn't fuse to my kiln shelf. When I'm ready to fire, I need to make sure that all of the plugs for the peepholes are in. The peepholes are little holes that allow you to look into the kiln. My kiln is loaded and ready to fire. So this flashing number here shows the temperature gauge inside the kiln. Right now the kiln is at about 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is room temperature. I'm going to start the kiln. I've made sure all the peepholes are plugged and I've started a hood over top of the kiln. That's a big fan to draft the hot air up and take it outside of the room. It's also a safety feature to draft out any uh, toxic fumes that might be emitted from the glazes. I'm just going to start by pressing cone fire and the cone is a measurement to determine how hot the kiln gets and it's usually a two digit or three digit number and actually the smaller the number the hotter it gets and we usually fire at an 06, which is considered a low fire. Uh, it's a lower temperature firing. Next, I set the kiln speed. I prefer to run the kiln on a slow setting. It's just to make sure that there are no complications in the firing. If there's any moisture left over in the clay, it gives it an opportunity to evaporate uh, rather than turn to steam quickly, which would cause a violent explosion and shatter the pieces inside the kiln. Next, it asks me if I want to hold it. Uh, I'm going to skip that. If I wanted to hold it at a, a temperature for a longer period of time, I could add additional time onto the firing schedule, but I usually don't do that. And then I just press start. I'm going to wait for it a little bit and then I'll hear the kiln start to kick on as the elements start to heat up and it's going to start kicking on a little bit of heat. Right now it's at 75 degrees but that's going to slowly start to increase as the kiln begins its firing schedule. These pictures taken through the peepholes during a firing show the red hot heating elements inside the kiln during a firing.
Here we are the day after the kiln firing. You can see from the number on the display that it took 11 hours and 32 minutes for the kiln to complete its firing cycle. So it took all that time to heat up to the proper temperature and hold it for the correct amount of time before the kiln shut itself off and it is starting to cool down. So if I press the enter button here, you'll see the temperature gauge settles on 641 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the temperature inside the kiln right now. Far, far too hot for us to empty it right now, so we're going to have to keep waiting. It would be very dangerous to try and open the kiln right now. I could receive burns. And it's also dangerous for the projects inside, which could undergo thermal shock. If the cold air rushed into that hot, hot kiln, it could shatter the pieces. Or it could also just interfere with the glazes. Uh, if they are cooled too rapidly, those glazes need to cool slowly. So when the time is uh, right to open it up and the temperature is cool enough, I'll wear some heavy duty gloves to carefully remove the items from the kiln. It's recommended that I empty the kiln when the temperature falls below 130 degrees. I'm back. I've been waiting patiently and the temperature has fallen to about 107 degrees, so it's safe for me to open up the kiln. Let's peer inside. Some glaze fired pieces on the top, and I now have some bisque fired boxes on the shelves below. So it's ready for me to unload with my heat resistant gloves, and uh, these pieces are ready to be glazed soon.